I hope I'm going to survive them. And today I want to do two things. First of all, thank you, Jane, for telling, reminding me about, well, I was going to get it out. Um, it's uh, Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. And she suggests that you should always soak your grains before you cook them. So I've started doing that. And uh, also the cookbook is sort of interesting because once in a while in the sidebar, it gives different ingredients and then you're to guess what it is and then you go and you find out. And, and it's products that really aren't that great. And she's pointing out how many chemicals they are in, in that food item. But uh, what I want to do today is I'm going to read about a certain product and at the end I'll tell you what it is, but see if you can guess what it is before, uh, before I tell you. And this is based on one pound. One pound of the average of this product contains 1.4 grams of protein, 23 milligrams of calcium, 73 uh, milligrams of phosphorus, 4.1 milligrams of iron, 1 milligram of niacin, and 16 milligrams of vitamin C along with vitamin A, beta carotene, the complete B complex vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, magnesium, sulfur, chlorine, potassium, iodine, sodium, copper, manganese, and high concentrations of hydrogen peroxide and formic acid. And then it uh, talks about it has 75 different compounds and uh, there's between 4 and 7 percent of the different parts, complexes, that they don't even know what does yet and what's in it and how it works. So that's what you're to guess. What is it? And now what I'm really doing today, I'm making a salad. And I'm making a rendis tuna. It's called Amazing Tuna Celery Walnut Salad. And I'm making her recipe, but I've uh, sort of tripled it. So I'm going to read you the recipe, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. It's four ounces of premium tuna, uh, four, uh, two tablespoons of chopped capers, two tablespoons of finely chopped celery, two tablespoons of chopped toasted walnuts, one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, one teaspoon finely minced, minced black olives, one teaspoon finely minced parsley, a half a teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I have here because I'm doubling it. I'm going to go back and I've got my tuna fish in the bowl. Okay, then it talks about capers. I don't have any capers. Do you have capers right now in your kitchen? If you do, this is the time to use them. But there are some substitutes you can use for capers. The number one is green olives. Well, I don't have any green olives either. Uh, black olives even come into play. Uh, but you'd have to use more than green. Okay. Uh, oh, I forget the third one. But the fourth one, and what I'm using today, is thyme. Just the herb, excuse me, the herb thyme. So I'm going to put some of that in. And I'm not really sure how much to put for how much. That I don't know. So uh, I, I've got this little teaspoon that I use. It's, not, it, it's less than a teaspoon. And it's, I'm saying it's three-fourths of a teaspoon I'm putting in. Maybe I'll have to taste it and say I need more. But that I'm putting in. I'm also going to put in some coriander. 
because I love coriander. So that's going to go in, and it goes actually with thyme. Okay, and this is my salad. And then I pan roasted some walnuts. They go in. I chopped up, finely chopped some celery. And then it talks about the olive oil. And I had to, mine was really cold, but I'm gonna see if it's, if I can get some out. And just to start with, I'm going to go, it says one tablespoon, I'm going to put in two, but mine's sort of thick because it's cold. I think it was warm, that might have been more than two tablespoons. Okay, and uh, then, whoops, how do I have this? Okay, and I don't have any red wine vinegar. <laughs> so what I have, and I've been... Uh, uh, extracting this. It's been, it's like a tincture, but it's in vinegar and it was in bilberry. And I, I just barely strained it off. So it gets two tablespoons of the bilberry. Bilberry is related to blueberry. It's very good for your eyes. Okay, so that's gone in and then we come to parsley I don't have parsley either I went to look in the garden mine is a little bit worse for wear so what I'm using and I just love and it's really why I put the cilantro I mean the uh, yeah the cilantro seeds in there it are the coriander seeds is because I'm putting cilantro in place of my parsley uh, and I'm putting in, and I it said finely minced. I was even tempted to put them in whole, so mine are coarsely chopped olives. And then the teaspoon and a half, that would be a tablespoon. If I, no, excuse me, it wasn't a teaspoon and a half, it was half a teaspoon. That's only a teaspoon. So it's just a small amount, and I'm pouring that on, and that's it. Now, just to mix it up, and that's my salad. Well, it looks good, and I am hungry. So I'm sort of anxious to try it. And there is my salad. Looks very nice. And now I'm going to tell you what I read about and I'm going to tell you just a little bit more. Have you guessed what it is? Do you know what it is? It's honey. I read about honey. And it says in here, Honey, often uh, insisted, be, insisted to be just another sugar. I lost my place. Okay. Okay, just another sugar or another simple carbohydrate like white sugar actually contains, among other things, a complex assortment of enzymes organic acids, esters, antibiotic agents, trace minerals, protein, carbohydrates, hormones, and antimicrobial compounds. And that's what I was reading about was honey. And besides that, when you buy honey, make sure you get raw honey. And if you can get wildflower honey, it's the best. Clover and alfalfa honey are apt to have pesticides put on them. So the wildflowers is really the best way to go. And your local honey. Find local honey. So that's it for today. And I thank
Thank you for coming, and give me a thumbs up if you want to, and we'll see you. Thank you.